Hello and welcome to another Vero software video on using Cabinet Vision Solid. Last time, we saw just how easy it was to generate reports and bid proposals from the job that we have created. This time, we're going to see just how easy it is for us to generate CNC machine code from that same job. Before we go any further, I would like to talk about a general misconception about Cabinet Vision. Cabinet Vision is an engineering software. It doesn't actually have the ability to generate any machine code at all. That function is actually performed by the Screen to Machine Center, also known as the S2M Center. What the S2M Center does is take the data from Cabinet Vision and convert it to code that can be read by your machine. You might think that because the machine code is generated by another program, that actually creating the code might require some special steps. Luckily, we make it easy by combining the S2M Center directly into the Cabinet Vision interface. With that out of the way, let's continue on to make some machine code. We have our job open, so all we have to do is click on the S2M Center Viewport tab to get us started. The first thing that the S2M Center does is take all of the engineering data from our job and convert it into a parts list. This parts list is what the S2M Center will use to generate our machine code. While Cabinet Vision and the S2M Center work together to make this parts list, you, the user, have the ability to make certain modifications to this list to meet any additional needs. The quantity column allows you to change the number of parts that are generated off of a single part geometry. The description column allows you to change the name of the part as it will appear on labels, reports, and printouts. The length and width columns allow you to change the physical size of the part, although this is not really recommended for users with CNC routers, as this may cause operation geometries such as line board, dados, and more to be placed incorrectly. Now we, we have this over column. What is this? This is what we call an overage column. It allows us to specify that, should any additional space be left over on a sheet or sheets, the S2M Center's optimizer should add additional parts up to the overage quantity. Now, to be clear, if I have a quantity of three, the S2M Center's optimizer will create three parts, adding additional sheets to fit those parts if necessary. If I take that same part with a quantity of three and set the overage to six, the S2M Center's optimizer will create up to nine parts, but won't add any new sheets of material if it can't make it to nine. The cab number column allows us to change the cabinet number that the part is associated to. Finally, the last column that we can change is the material column. Along with creating the parts list, the S2M Center grabbed all the unique materials used in our job and put them in a list as well. If I switch my view from parts to materials, we can see the materials that we can choose from. Here we can add new materials, change the names of materials, the length and width of the material, the cost of each sheet, as well as the quantity of sheets that we have on hand. Now we talked about the columns that you can edit, but we also have the ability to edit which of those columns are shown to us. We just need to place a check in the columns that we want to see and uncheck any columns that we don't want to see. I'm just going to leave them alone and move on though. Now you might be asking, how does the S2M Center create machine code for my machine? Well, that information is stored in the machine catalog. This holds all of the information about all the machines that you will use to create parts. Now, each person's machine catalog will be different, and I'm using the machines that come with the S2M Center during installation. Each machine in the catalog will have its very own settings. There are a whole lot of settings for each machine type, as well as manufacturer and NC link type. I've already gotten my settings the way I want them for this output, so let's close out of the machine catalog and take a look at the tool catalog. This is where we would find all of the tools that the S2M Center uses to create the toolpaths for our machine code. As usual, I'm using the tools that were provided when the S2M Center was installed. You can see that there are quite a few of them though. Like the machines in the machine catalog, each tool will have its own set of options that will define how the S2M Center will use it. Another powerful feature of the S2M Center is the parts filter. Here we can filter out parts using a plethora of criteria. Not only can we filter by assembly or material type, part type, and even special parameters, but we can also save any filter that we create so that we can perform the filter again at a later time. On top of all of that, we can choose how the filter actually filters out parts. Do we want it to add filtered parts to the selected list? Or do we want it to filter the items that we already selected? There's even the ability to use the filter to remove the items from the list. 
So, we've seen a lot of features that the S2M Center has to offer, but what about the original point of this all? What about my machine code? So, let's skip all the other stuff for now and take a look at actually outputting some machine code now. To do that, we just need to click on the Optimize button. But first, we need to make sure that we're using the proper machines that we want to output to. It looks like I'm going to be outputting to my CNC saw. Heh, <laughs> seesaw. Sorry, um, yeah, so our default saw is the machine that will be used to cut out our parts out of the sheets. And the default P2P is the machine that will be used to cut out any operations like dados, line boring, and more. With the machines verified, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Optimize button. Now, wait, what's this message? Well, it's the S2M Center telling me that some of my parts are just a little too big to fit on the sheet sizes that were loaded. These, uh, these parts over here with the red icons, those are the culprits. Now, what could we do to fix this? Um, I guess I could go back into my material view, where I could change the sheet sizes there, but then the rest of my parts would be optimized on sheets that were too large. Hmm. I could add a new material in that view, then set each part in the list to use that material instead. Now, what happens if I need to re-optimize this job? I'd have to remember to go do that again. I think, yeah, the best option would be to go back into the job, alter my countertops, because, you know, that's what's causing this problem, and then the parts would actually fit on all of my sheets. That way I don't have to worry about it in the future. But you know what? I'm not going to do any of that right now, because I just want to show off the optimizer. So I'm just going to go ahead and click yes and move along. Now we finally get to start optimizing our job. This portion of the S2M Center will take all of my parts and place them on my materials in the most optimum way. The reason that we have this dialog pop up before optimization starts is to give us just a couple more options before we do anything. The run number lets me have a little more control on the prefix that the S2M Center gives to my machine code files while the include CNC operations switch allows me to dump any of the operations like line boring and dados and such off of my parts and only do secondary cutting on my point to point for say toe notches and stuff like that. I'm just going to go ahead and click run and let the optimizer do its thing. That was pretty quick. The optimizer just took literally hundreds of parts and went through a whole bunch of patterns and solutions to place all of those parts on our materials in the best way, based on our machine settings of course. Let me back it up and slow it down so we can see it a little better, because that actually took less than 5 seconds to do. Now that we're back at the beginning of the optimization, when I click on run, we can actually see what the optimizer is doing. The first thing it does is grab a material and starts trying to put parts on the sheets. Each solution it goes through is another set of patterns that it's tried out. Once it finds that perfect optimization for the parts on that sheet or set of sheets, it moves to the next material. Let's pause for just a second. You can see that it's actually given us a lot of information about what it did, like the number of patterns it made, the total number of sheets that those patterns take up, the percentage of the material that it used, as well as any offcut material left over, and what percentage of waste was left. Now, FYI, that waste is an overall value combined from the total number of sheets used, so that's not 12% of each sheet. And that's pretty much the gist of it, so let's bring it back up to proper speed so we can continue on. We're seeing a lot of warnings here. This is because I'm using out-of-the-box tools, machines, materials, cabinets, etc. And these are exactly what they are, warnings. We can see that the last message given is that there are no errors. These warnings are just letting me know that the S2M Center doesn't like using my 3 8 compression bit for some operations, which I can't really blame it. I know that they're being used for data operations and such, which I wouldn't normally use. So it's really nice I was told about this, as I could now go and fix it before I go any further, which I won't. So... As you should expect, there is much to do here, and I would explain it all, or at least most of it, but unfortunately we're getting close to that 15 minute YouTube upload limit. So let me just click on the NC Code and Labels button so we can make some machine code real quick. The first thing that's happening is that the S2M Center is creating images for each of my parts. These images can be used in Vero's Label It program, as well as be output for your use. 
So I got another warning. This is the S2M Center telling me that my saw settings need to be changed to handle a less complex pattern. For our purposes, we can ignore this and click OK, to which the S2M Center responds by generating code for my saw. Now that the saw code has been made and saved to my hard drive, the S2M Center is preparing to generate code for my point-to-point -point router. As I said before, it's a lot of parts. Yep, a lot of parts. Seems to be 285 parts, in fact. I guess it's not really a whole lot of parts in the grand scheme of things, but I would really hate to have to do this by hand. So that does it for code generation from the S2M Center from within Cabinet Vision. I think you have a good idea now of how the S2M Center integrates with Cabinet Vision to allow us to create machine code. I hope you enjoyed this series on using Cabinet Vision Solid, and if you want more information about Cabinet Vision, the S2M Center, or any of the other great products that Vero makes, please look us up on the web at www.verosoftware.com forward slash products.